Hello YouTubers, welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. This is Zach, and up this week I have a Listing Matchbox accessory pack, the A1B, which is the BP pump and sign combination. So these were produced uh, starting in 1963 as a, a supplemental kind of play set to all of Lesney's other uh, die-cast models. Um, this particular one uh, I picked up quite a while ago um, and I got an incredible deal on it because the, uh, the top of the pump was missing. Now this set also has a sign with it and I was lucky enough that one of my viewers actually sent me uh, this sign so I could complete this set. Um, he saw the the opening video, the unboxing video of it when I uh, when I got it, and uh, knew that uh, that was the piece I was short to complete this. Um, as you can see, this particular model is not in great shape. The paint isn't too bad. It's got uh, some heavy high edge wear, play wear on it, um, and the decals on it are actually in really good shape. Uh, I really uh, am surprised with how much wear is elsewhere on the model that the decals do look as good as they do. But uh, obviously the, the biggest component to this is uh, the top of that first pump there is missing. And so when I got this uh, model, I knew I wanted to do a restoration on it, but honestly, I, I really wasn't sure how. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe I could 3D print a piece uh, up there or resin cast something um, and both of those require a lot of uh, tools and things that uh, at the time I didn't have available to me and I knew you know as I did a bunch of restorations that I was going to get better at doing these and I was going to learn new methods and so I kind of put this in a box uh, and put it just on the back burner until I, I kind of improved my own skills enough that I thought I could tackle this. Um, this video is going to be one of a series of videos that I want to do on these accessory packs. And uh, I'm actually doing them a little out of order because the A1A is the ESO pumps. And I have a couple of those. One of them was sent to me by a viewer as well uh, that I want to do up and do a full restoration on. But uh, I figured I'd start with the hardest one first. Um, so that's why we're, we're working on the... Uh, the BP pumps today. Now when this model was originally issued uh, it would have had a few more pieces that you can see are missing. So the the two little raised uh, areas between the pumps those are lamp posts or would have been lamp posts. Um, as Lesney progressed and, and when they came out with this second version uh, they made a few changes and they introduced some plastic pieces. So the lamp posts in this were uh, cast or, or poured in plastic um, as well as the little attendant. Uh, so the only part of the base casting that belongs to the attendant you can see right here on the end are his legs and a little section of body that would shove up inside the little plastic attendant uh, to hold that in place. Um, now obviously this model is long since missing all of its plastic components and uh, none of the copies that I have have original plastics. I think that was something that was very easily lost. The fitment wasn't great on them. And so uh, I'm going to have to order some reproduction plastics to be able to restore those. I am lucky that uh, I think almost every single one of the uh, parts suppliers for the restoration uh, uh, hobby, um, they all carry the uh, plastics for this model. And so I'll look at uh, the different suppliers and see which one has the best pricing and uh, best shipping because being stateside, uh, unfortunately, I'm not aware that we have any suppliers left uh, in the U.S. The, the one that I started using when I, I very first got into this hobby, um, he's kind of getting out and has closed up shops. So um, I've got to order abroad anytime I need parts and pieces. Um, so shipping is always a, a big consideration for me. So... I'll look through those and, and figure out uh, which one I want to get. Uh, but I think to start is to tackle the obvious elephant in the room, the, the missing top to that pump. 
and uh, I've got something new I want to try. So I'm happy to share that with you all. So let's get going. So I ordered uh, some stuff a while back, uh, and you might have seen it in one of my earlier Tool Time videos. It's called Blue Stuff, or at least that's the brand name that I found it under. And it's a thermoplastic kind of putty. Uh, so you, you heat it up, you get it warm in some, some hot water, um, and form it down. Now, to recreate the part, uh, I'm using a little bit of this Milliput. And Milliput is a, a product that I was originally turned on to by one of the other toy restoration channels, uh, Toy Poloi. And it's a, a two-part kind of putty. It's almost uh, like a Play-Doh consistency. And you mix the two parts together, knead them up in your fingers, and it over time will, will set up and get hard. So I used a little bit of this blue stuff uh, to make a mold of the, the top of one of my pumps that had the, the top piece intact. And then I mixed up a little bit of the Milliput um, and forced that putty down into my blue stuff mold. Um, and you can see here, I, I had to kind of ease the sides of it just so I could get it on and off the original casting. Um, but it worked really well. Uh, it pulled up a lot of the details. I'm really pleased with uh, just all the, the little nuances that came out in that mold. And now I've got a milliput copy of the top of the pump. Now to, to secure it and put it on, I knew I was going to need some way to hold it. So I drilled a little hole in my milliput uh, replacement piece and I drilled out a little hole in the top of the pump. And I'm planning on using uh, maybe a nail or some, some kind of piece of metal that I can put up in there uh, to further reinforce that and make sure that uh, my replacement top piece is really held secure onto the base casting. Now, the piece that I made, this replacement piece, is uh, a little bit bigger. It has more kind of the top end of the pump and uh, some of the pieces that I still have on the base casting. So. All I'm going to do here is uh, trim off a little bit of that excess, uh, some of those, uh, that extra piece there kind of at the, the base, the collar, that uh, I still have on the casting. Um, and as I inch in on this, uh, I'm going to switch over. I use these uh, nail files to kind of sand and, and fine-tune details, uh, remove casting lines. They're great because they're really super cheap. Uh, you can get a, a package of... I don't know, probably 20, 25 of them at uh, almost any big box store, uh, department stores, um, you know, even Walmart, Target will carry these. Um, they may be a little bit cheaper through some of the nail supply companies or beauty supply companies, um, and they have bigger versions of these as well. So uh, I love using these nail files to kind of sand and, and uh, fine tune some of this, but I'm going to keep uh, kind of trimming up the base of this piece, and you can see... I've got my hole drilled pretty much dead center there, um, so that should make it uh, a pretty good alignment to the hole that I have drilled on the casting. So I'm going to fine tune this, trim it up, uh, we'll do a little test fit here, and that actually looks pretty good. I also want to keep in mind that I'm going to need a little bit of glue or adhesive down in there, and that can fill in some of those gaps, some of those unevenness. Now I found uh, a nail that is one of the nails I've used to make axles out of in the past and it's just about the right size for my hole. So if I pull that nail through um, I, I think I can put a little of my super jet, my jet glue. Um, I really love this glue. It, it just uh, it works so well. It's good consistency. sets up. It's nice and strong. Um, so it's a good CA glue. So I'm going to put a couple drops of my jet glue down inside the casting um, and pull up on that nail to make sure it's really good and set in that hole. So we're going to let our glue dry there and I'll be back. So the jet glue dries really quick, usually about 5-10 minutes and uh, it's nice and strong. Um, I've gone back and I clipped off just the extra, the excess uh, end of that nail. Um, and I did a, a test fit to make sure that it was long enough to go up 
into the little piece I made, but not too long to, to push it up higher than it needs to be. And uh, the test fit seemed to, to work pretty well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, again, with just a little of the CA glue, um, a little of my jet glue, uh, we're going to put in place back the, uh, the top that's been missing from this casting for how, who knows how many years. Um, now, I do want to make sure once I get this on and get it in place that it lines up w with uh, the other tops. I want to make sure that it's uh, straight up and down. Um, and it's not angled front to back. I want to make sure it's uh, low enough and, and tight enough to the casting. And that looks pretty good. So after waiting a few minutes for that to go off, I want to do a quick check here. And you can see as I lay my file over, I've got a little gap on the middle pump, which means that my replacement piece is a little bit too high. Um, and I'm not really sure what caused that if uh, I didn't get enough material off the bottom uh, or if you know the the mold that I made um, the the blue stuff it's a little flexible it's a little soft and uh, as much of the milliput as I forced down in it to make sure that uh, it picked up all the little details I think I may have actually flexed my mold a little bit um, and made it a little bit bigger in the mold than it needed to be but uh, one of the great things about Milliput is it's very easy to work with, uh, especially once it's set up uh, fully cured and, and it's nice and hard. Uh, you can sand it, you can paint it, you can cut it, you can chisel it, you can do just about anything. And so a little adjustment there uh, brings that into alignment with the other tops of my pumps. So that's looking pretty good uh, overall. You can see, I kind of look down, line up both sides front to back. Um, this looks like a, a pretty decent repair. Overall, I'm really happy with that. Now, because the original decals on this piece uh, are in such good shape, I'm going to try something that uh, you've seen me do on a couple of restorations previously, and that is I'm going to try to preserve them uh, by taping them off with a little scotch tape before I do a repaint on this model. Um, because I want to try to save these decals, I will not be doing a full strip of this paint, um, which means, you know, I've still got to rough it up, but uh, to to try to save as much of the original decals as I can, um, this is going to end up just being an, an overpaint or a touch up on the original paint on this. So to, uh, to protect the decals, I've had the best luck just with uh, plain 3M scotch tape uh, and you can see I'm kind of lining it up. Um, I like to take at least one straight edge of the tape on one of the straight edges of the decals and then using a little utility X-Acto knife I'll trim off right around the raised edges of the casting. Um, I want the tape to pretty much match exactly where the edges of the decal stop. Um, if I, I've found in the past that if I can bury that line between new paint and old paint in one of these uh, recessed areas of the casting, um, it helps hide that transition a little bit better and uh, it's less obvious that it's been repainted. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm just, we've got all the, the preliminary uh, pieces in and I'll go back and trim off the excess. Um, once I get that down, usually I use a toothpick or some kind of a, a straight edge to kind of burnish around the edges. Um, that's a really important step. If you don't do that, uh, there's a chance that the paint can seep under and, and kind of wick itself under the edge of the tape. And so uh, by burnishing down the edges of the tape with a toothpick uh, and getting that glue to really adhere uh, all the way around the perimeter of that cut edge, um, I make sure that I don't get any of that uh, paint seepage uh, under the sides. So uh, we're going to go ahead and tape off all the tops burnish the edges and then we'll be ready for paint.
So before I put some paint down uh, to touch up some of the high edge wear play wear on this model, uh, I'm using a little bit of my quad aught steel wool just to kind of rough up some of those other surfaces. Um, now I use enamel paints and Lesney used enamel paints. So I'm going enamel over enamel so I shouldn't have any problems with it sticking. Um, and since I'm staying the same color, going white over the white, uh, I know I don't have to get it very thick. Um, and I do want to be really careful as I'm doing this that I'm not hitting uh, any of those areas where those original decals are. Um, and it really doesn't take much. All I'm really trying to do is kind of knock down the shine of that original paint. Uh, just give a little tooth to that, uh, that layer underneath to make sure that uh, the new layer of paint will stick really well to it. Um, also doing any little touch-ups, uh, any of the really deep scratches, something that uh, is still going to show up even after I repaint, um, just as a low spot. So you can see it doesn't take too much here, just a quick once over with the steel wool and we'll get this into the spray booth. So the paint color on this, I am going to use a straight testers gloss white. Um, it's a, a pretty good match to the original. You know, I, I know when you're looking at white on a wall, there's thousands of different shades of white you can go with, but on stuff like this, white is white is white. So we're going with just the straight testers gloss white. We'll mix in a little thinner so it's foilable in our airbrush um, and we'll be ready to go. It wasn't really a lot of spots that I had to uh, grab onto this casting with my uh, hemostats, uh, but I did find that the tips of one of my larger sets fit right up the hole of that center pump pretty well. Now, when I'm doing the paint on this, you can see I'm starting out very, very light coats, and I'm only hitting really the, the dark areas where the the metal of the casting was exposed. Um, I don't want to get the paint too thick on this because I am doing an overpaint. Um, I, I really want to try to hide uh, the fact that uh, this has an extra layer. And if I go too thick, you're going to start losing some of those casting details. Um, and frankly, that's kind of what sets the Lesney Matchbox stuff apart. That's why kids loved it was it was so real. Um, had so many details in that casting. So as I lay down this first layer, this little tack coat of paint, I'm really just focused on only those areas of high edge wear, the play wear, um, as a way to even this out and prepare it for the second coat. Now, typically when I do a restoration, I do three coats of paint. Um, but since this is an overpaint and I don't want to get too thick, I'm only going to be doing two coats. So this second coat here is going to be my wet coat, my final coat. Um, and you can see I, I got a pretty uh, good evening out with that first coat. A lot of those areas where there was a chip or an edge in the paint um, have been kind of filled in and hidden. I did hit this uh, one more time with the quad -aught steel wool in between my uh, first and second coats. Uh, again, I didn't want to take much of the paint off, just kind of evening out, especially some of those smooth or flat areas. Um, and you can see I haven't really touched the bottom of the casting at all. Um, and I may or may not do that. Sometimes I like leaving the bottom original when I do an overpaint. 
um, just because it, it kind of shows some of the history of the model. And again, I'm not trying to fake it uh, or make this seem like it's a mint original. Um, it's a restoration, and I'm okay with that. But uh, it's, to me, that's leaving the bottom is kind of a, a telltale sign that this is a restoration. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave this one alone. I'm pretty happy with the overall finish of this. And you can see kind of through the tape, you can see those decals there um, kind of shining through. So that kind of tells you just how thick the, the paint actually is. So now it's time to see if all of our efforts to try to save these decals paid off. I kind of figured, you know, if I tried it and it didn't work, um, I have replacement decals and I can always strip this model down and repaint it and do all new decals. Um, so, you know, worst comes to worst, I kind of got a backup plan. But uh, when I did the Nestle's van and I used this method, it, it ended up working out so well. Um, I knew I wanted to try it again. And I thought this casting was a, a decent one to give it a shot to see if... Uh, lightning strikes twice and, and it works a second time. So um, to get the, the tape off, uh, because we burnish down the edges, these, these do get stuck really good. Um, so I usually have pretty good luck just starting it in a corner with one of my toothpicks and kind of pushing into the paint, getting it to, to wrinkle up or, or peel up just a little bit. And then uh, I'll use my tweezers to remove the rest of it. I do want to be really careful uh, when I pull back on the tape because the tape could possibly remove part of the decal if any of the decals are loose. Um, and I did get a, a viewer suggestion, I think it was on our Facebook page, they said uh, you might run a little uh, decal set over the original decals before uh, doing this. and. Uh, I didn't think about it with this model, so I didn't do that with this model. So I'm hoping that all of these original decals were were stuck well enough to begin with. But uh, I do like that suggestion, and I think if I continue to use this method, um, the next time I try it, I am gonna gonna do that. I'm gonna run a little decal set over the original decals, just to make sure that they're really well stuck before I put any tape on top. Um, but this appears to have worked uh, just as well as the first time. So you can see as I pull the tape back, I really want to pull it kind of at a steep uh, down cut angle to the surface. Uh, that's kind of twofold in purpose. One, I think it, it has less of a chance of peeling back the decal. And uh, two, I think it does a, a really good job of uh, cutting the edge of the paint and making that a nice, clean, smooth edge. Um, so you've got to be careful when you peel that back, um, that you peel it kind of back over on itself, kind of at that really sharp downward angle. Um, but this appears to have worked uh, really pretty well. So i got to say, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, the results that we got out of that. There is a few areas in there where you can see the the paint was hiding some of that high edge wear. Uh, that BP logo in the middle has that little chunk out of it, and that's just something that was missing in the original decal. And so I think to hit some of those, uh, I'm going to try to use uh, just my fine-tipped touch-up brush and go back in just by hand and hit a couple of those areas where uh, the tape kind of hid some of those imperfections. Uh, again, I want to be really light hand with this. Um, I didn't put a very heavy coat of paint on, and so when you go in and do the touch-up by hand, if you get it too thick, you're going to end up with little bubbles and runs, and it's going to be obvious that there was a brush paint over it. So um, I'm still using my, my thin down white and just a very light hand, only on those areas where uh, some of that high edge wear didn't get uh, covered up with our overpaint.
With all of our paint finished up, uh, I'm going to turn my attention to the missing decals on the uh, pump top that we recreated. Uh, I ordered these decals from Black Square, um, ordered a whole bunch of uh, different decals from them, and uh, these are a pretty good match, pretty good set. Um, the size I noticed is slightly different. Um, Honestly, the, the biggest thing that would bother me on these is just the color. Uh, the color of green in this decal is nowhere near uh, what the original BP is. BP had a much darker kind of a forest green color, and uh, the color on the decal is more of a, a lime or kind of a brighter green. So I know it's not going to match the original decals, and again, I know this is a restoration. I'm not trying to fake anybody out with it. Um, so I'm okay with it being a little bit different uh, because it's a restoration and it's going to be different. kind of shows uh, the, the history of what's happened to this casting. So, um, And it, it's what I've got. You know, I could probably order decals from uh, two or three other suppliers. This is not a, a hard model to find these for. Um, and, you know, they might be better, they might be exactly the same. I really don't know. And so, since I've got these, I'm going to go ahead and use them. Again, at some point in the future, I might find something better. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll remove these, take them off, and see if I can get something that's a little bit closer to the, the dark green color. But uh, for now, we'll use what we got. That's going to do it. Uh, just added back those two missing decals from the topper that we recreated. So as a part two to this series, uh, I do have an original box for this model. Um, and you can see it's not in great shape. And I did go ahead and order a reproduction set of the attendant and the um, little lamp posts that would have come with this model. Um, I got these from uh, modelcarparts.com. Um, they are based in the Netherlands and I've had really good luck with uh, almost everything that I've got from them. Um, you can see when I get these in, there's still a couple little pieces of the, the sprue uh, where these were cut off the sprue and so I'm doing just a, a little fine tune, a little adjustment on that uh, to trim those off, trim them up and uh, sand them back. Uh, again, just using my little nail file sanding stick to, to do that. Um, the mini shears here that I've got, uh, I really love these things just because they've got such a fine cutting edge and uh, make it real easy to get up against something. Uh, that's pretty tiny and, and they just work really well. So I uh, just trimmed off some of that excess flashing and uh, the little sprue attachment areas and the attendant is going to stick back down right on top of his legs. Uh, pretty pretty happy with that. The lamp posts you can see they've got the same little issue with that kind of squared uh, sprue attachment piece that's on the top. At least I believe that is. I don't think that's part of what the original casting would have been. Pretty sure those would have been rounded off. So I'll uh, do a little standing adjustment on those and uh, get those fitted up to the model as well.
that's going to complete our sympathetic restoration on the BP pump station. Really happy with how this came out, uh, especially that restored pump top that was missing. Um, so this is going to conclude our part one of this video series. Uh, in part two, I'm going to tackle a restoration on this original box. So click the part two if you want to see that. So as a quick reminder, this is where we started with this model. So this casting was not in great shape. The, the obvious worst part was the missing pump top. But uh, the decals on this did look really nice. And so I wanted to do everything I could to preserve those original decals and just address the paint issues and the missing pump top. And here's what it looks like today. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Um, initially, I thought it would really bother me, the, the different color on the decal, but when you see the overall uh, finished casting, the, the, the model piece when it's all done, um, I really don't notice it as much. It, it really doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was going to. Um, and I think in the, for most people, you wouldn't even know that the pump topper on the right side was a replacement or recreation. Um, so really happy to get to try out that new method of using the blue stuff to uh, replicate uh, a part from a casting. Um, that worked really well, and I, I think for sure I'll be uh, attempting to use that in the future on some other pieces. Uh, I've got some ideas and maybe some car drivers and some different things that I want to do. And I might try to do those in a separate video or video series uh, just on casting and making uh, replacement pieces using that method. But uh, on this little pump station here, uh, it worked just flawless and really, really pleased with how that came out. Um, so as always, if you enjoyed the video, give me a like down below. If you want to keep up with us, uh, click that subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notified when we post new content. Um, and as always, leave me your comments. I love hearing from my viewers, um, seeing what you think I did right, what you'd rather see me try, uh, new stuff you want me to explore on the channel. I read all my comments and uh, love to get feedback from you all. So uh, as always, join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.